Hi, Trevor here. Life Reflection Requests. Thank you for stopping by. Well, I know I said from the Eric Carmen video that we were going to be going on to Eric Clapton today, but um, I got this very kind request in the comments uh, recently, and it basically said, I can't wait for you to get to Kay because I'm hanging out to see a couple of videos on Kate Bush. And so I thought, well, yeah, why not? Let's break into the series and do a couple on Kate Bush. Of course, there's a couple of awesome songs of hers. So Kate's star, uh, story started at Bexley Heath, Kent in 1958. And because of the musical family that she was part of, she taught herself to play the piano at the age of 11. In fact, it was from that point that she started writing songs, which is pretty amazing. And given this song we're going to talk about today, it was, was released at the age of 19. There we go, because we're talking about an absolute classic today. Now, Kate Bush is, you know, I think there's no one like her really in lots of ways. Um, I would put her in, as I've talked about before, distinctive. Now, when I talk about distinctive, I'm talking about no one coming even close to her, really. She's very, very unique, this lass. Why is she unique? Because she's been defined as being eclectic, very exper experimental, and almost surreal in her in her in the way she is now surreal is kind of like oh i can't quite believe it but it's kind of there and it's pretty amazing and pretty compelling uh, this is what makes kate's bush such the influence that she has been and we'll get onto her influence a little bit more on the next video she has a what classes a, a dramatic soprano voice and certainly when you get on to um, the song i'm going to talk about today which you have to talk about with her she gets quite high in this song and it's just beautifully transcendent what can we say now one interesting thing about kate bush because she's quite expressive and she does like to move her hands around and when she performs she was the first one to use a headset with a mic as part of it um, in music. So, you know, there has been no shortage of people who have used that since then, including the public speakers that seem to do the public speaking. And so she was the first to do that because she needed to keep her hands free. Now, between 1978 and 1993, there were seven studio albums and there was a bit of a break from 2005 to 2011 three. So, you know, that's 10 studio albums. Pretty good. There's been a compilation album in there, six video albums, 39 music videos, Four EPs, what is it about EPs? Everyone seems to bring out EPs. 33 singles plus some collaborations and, and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, Kate has had uh, 25 top 40 singles and she was the first female artist in the UK to have an immediate album that went straight to number one. So very significant in the scheme of things. We'll get a little bit more into her significance next time. Now, when you think about Kate Bush, and this is a song that was very much requested because, you know, when you, you've got to request this song with Kate Bush. This came out in nine, on the 20th of January 1978. It was her debut single of her first album, The Kick Inside. And she was 19 years old when she wrote this song. Well, she was probably before 19 when she wrote it, but certainly when it was released, she was 19 years old. And the song, of course, is Wuthering Heights. Now, Wuthering Heights is based on Emily Bronte's book from 1847, um, Wuthering Heights. Uh, it's been classed as a literary classic. Now, the interesting thing, thing about Emily Bronte was that she died at the age of 30. <laughs> and this is the only book she ever wrote. And I think... <laughs> In her lifetime, she probably didn't understand the significance and importance of the book uh, that she wrote. Because Wuthering Heights has been defined as a uh, very violent, full of sexual passion and tension and love and romance and hate and love and, and camaraderie and friendship and betrayal and just a whole gamut of things. But in amongst all of that, there is still a compelling love um, through that whole thing and, and very erotic in places. Think about 1847, you know, probably a little bit out there for that period, I'm thinking. Now, um, in Kate Bush's song, um, there are two characters. There's Heathcliff and there's Kathy. 
Of course, in Wuthering Heights, um, the character is Catherine. So very much it's a story of the altercations between those two. It talks about, I love you, I wanted you, I needed you, but I hate you at the same time. And, um, you know, I'm just, oh my goodness, you know, life is just so much better when you're part of it. But, oh my goodness, I can't stand you at the same time. <laughs> Reminds me of the song uh, With or Without You by U2. Uh, very much um, you know, on the bed of males, um, I'm waiting. It's that kind of thing. Um, and um, so very much, here. Yeah, there. Uh, and one of the things about Kate Bush is that she tries to embody the characters that she reads into her song. So instead of just sort of reading the story and going, yeah, whatever, she actually tries to become one of the characters and immerse herself in the story. And and I think uh, one of the takeaways from um, from Kate Bush today, as we look at Wuthering Heights and just the classic song that it is, is um, that when that first of all we all have a story, and, and that we are making our story as we go, and so we are immersing ourselves in our own stories, and hopefully some people around us are also immersing themselves um, as we do life together. But we can. But how do we sort of discover you know how our story unfolds well our story it often we often find out because of um, other people's stories and us in resonating with them and then we think well that's pretty inspirational um i think i might try that myself but of course we put our own spin on it we don't kind of just do exactly the same thing we put our own spin on it and you know just think about music as i said you know um Wuthering Heights, the song, was inspired by the book. Many bands have been, been inspired by people such as the Beatles and Led Zeppelin and a few others like that. Uh, and so, you know, we do get inspired by people earlier. Um, and we never really know who's going to be significant inspiration. We just know that when it comes, we think, oh, well, I'm so glad that I, I know about that. But the kicker here is, and the album, The Kick Inside, I think is pretty good here. Um, who are we? inspiring no who it is that who is it that we um uh, people who are looking at us and thinking wow that's pretty cool what if i can do a similar thing as that so who are we inspiring because you know as we get embroiled in other people's stories people get embroiled in ours and we never really really know what people think and what people are wondering as they look on us and they may not even know themselves, you know, you know, sometimes life goes beyond words a bit. We just get a bit of a vibe, a bit of a feeling. It's almost like a, yeah, I kind of get that. Well, certainly for Kate Bush, when she wrote the classic Wuthering Heights, she resonated with the book and uh, and the rest is history. In fact, in a lot of ways, um, when you, I think I can remember a little while ago when I did Alan Parsons' project so long ago now, that I did the video Last Sagrada Familia. Now, of course, that song, which is an epic song, by the way, it's based on the cathedral in Barcelona. If you want to get pretty pretty amazed by building, just look it up, La Sagrada Familia. There's something about that song that's just brought that cathedral to life. The cathedral brought the song to life. I think similar here, we very much got all of the passion, hatred, love, betrayal, the whole thing of Wuthering Heights being brought to life by this song and it needs to be ethereal it needs to be mysterious it needs to be everything that the classic Wuthering Heights song actually is to bring the book to life so Kate Bush if you're actually watching this uh, video 1978 what what an amazing gift you brought to this world with this song and thank you for the way that you have uh, brought your music to this world so um so if you um so if you're just thinking about your own story, may you consider how you are being an inspiration to somebody else. So I trust that will be an encouragement for you today. Well, thank you for the guy who very kindly gave this uh, gave this request today. Um, it's very nice to get such comments such as that one. And no, you didn't have to wait till K. Thank you that you got that as well. We're going to slip it in there early for you. All right. No problems at all. And at my absolute pleasure. So um, we are going to continue on with the second video that was requested um, next time by Kate Bush. Might as well give her a little bit of a midi series. And yes, this is K, even though it's currently in E. <laughs> 
So um, Eric Clapton's just going to have to wait for another video or two. Um, he can come, he'll come when, when it's ready. Uh, but thank you for your indulgence with me as I slip requests in from time to time. So yeah, oh by the way, the, 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 the videos below, yes we have, there were two official versions of this uh, video of this particular song. So I've, um, I've put both of them there as for you and I've also put a live version as well. Well it's in the studio so you're never really, really sure but I thought it'd be good to see just Kate Bush sort of doing her thing live. So we've got the, all of the links to those three videos are in the description below. And when I do requests, I don't tend to sneak in the, the, the last video. That will happen when the series continues. And so you know, if you want to recap on Eric Harmon, we'll look at him from the last time. Well, that's it for today. Uh, we're going to continue on with Kate Bush's story next time. So thank you for everybody for hanging around today. Until next time, I'll catch you around. Bye for now.